Welcome to the third and last video tutorial on staging pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Again, following the same steps of the checklist, identifying the location of the tumor first, clear dilatation of the bile ducts, intrahepatic and extrahepatic, following the common bile duct. There's an obstruction over here at the head of the pancreas, looking at the main pancreatic duct. It's dilated to a lesser degree, mainly over here, following it downstream. There's an obstruction over here, and at the level of obstruction, we can identify a obstructing lesion. It's a solid lesion, hypovascular. For some overview, coronal reformat, showing dilatation of the main pancreatic duct, up to the level of the head of the pancreas. Probably only slightly dilated because it runs just lateral to the lesion. And dilatation of the and bile ducts, both intrahepatic, extrahepatic, up to the head of the pancreas with the obstructing lesion over here. So again, solid hypovascular consisted with a pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Looking at the rest of the pancreas, apart from a small cystic lesion over here, probably a side branch IPMN, parenchyma is normal. So the next step would be staging the tumor. First looking at arterial anatomy. In this case normal anatomy of the celiac trunk, normal anatomy of the SMA, no relevant anatomical variants, some degree of stenosis of the celiac trunk, no collaterals are seen. Then looking at tumor extension, the lesion is on the medial side of the pancreatic head and shows clear extension on the medial side in the fat towards the SMA with clear involvement of the SMA going upwards about 90 to 180 degrees, just less than 180 degrees involvement of the SMA with some slight narrowing. There's a larger caliber downstream. No irregularity of the wall. So this type of tumor extension is consistent with tumor growing through the SMA plexus towards the SMA. Typical kind of extension. Then easily overlooked is involvement of the hepatic artery with tumor growing in a cephalid direction. It's best assessed in the sagittal plane over here the sagittal reformat, celiac trunk, giving off the hepatic artery over there, running behind the pancreatic body and the tumor over here, which as you can see has contact with the common hepatic artery, 0 to 90 degrees. Looking at the celiac trunk itself, it's free of tumor. So regarding anterior involvement, we have 90 to 180 degrees of the SMA and 0 to 90 degrees involvement of the common hepatic artery. Next step is assessing portal venous involvement. So we'd have to use the portal venous phase for that. Starting below the tumor, following the SMV upwards, tumor contact with both the SMV and the portal vein. And as you can see, clear deformity of both the SMV and the portal vein as well. The amount of contact is 90 to 180, 180 degrees and there's more than 50% stenosis. Also nicely appreciated on this coronal reformat, tumor over here, main portal vein, showing deformity over there and going to the front. More than 50% stenosis, almost occlusion of the portal vein and superior mesenteric vein. Next step would be of course assessing lymphadenopathy. No suspicious lymph nodes were seen and looking for distant metastasis. In this case an hemogeoma was noted cranially in the left hepatic lobe but no liver metastasis or metastasis at other locations were seen. Then looking at the resectability criteria 
Based on the Dutch pancreatic cancer group criteria, this tumor is irresectable since there is more than 90 degrees contact with the SMA. Looking at the NCCN criteria, this tumor is also irresectable based on arterial involvement. Not solely on the amount of SMA involvement since that is less than 180 degrees, but given the fact that there is involvement of both the hepatic artery and the SMA which makes resection of the hepatic artery impossible and even if this amount of arterial involvement was less you'd have to discuss with your surgeon if the amount of venous involvement would be reconstructable because otherwise this would be an irretractable tumor based on venous involvement as well so patient would start off with chemotherapy followed by restaging to assess if resection will become possible in a later stage.